one, two. Good evening, good evening, Canada, good evening, America. How are you? I'm from England, that's right, get used to it. <laughs> yes, so my name is Stephen K. Amos. Uh, I was born in London, born and raised in London. My parents are Nigerian. Any Nigerians in the house? Long shot, I didn't think there were. <laughs> I asked that question wherever I go, and in Ireland, uh, a man in the front row, the palest man you've ever seen, with bright orange hair, just goes, yes! <laughs> I was like, oh my God, are you Nigerian? And he said, fuck no. <laughs> I'm just trying to help. <laughs> She's gonna love that, right? Now, basically, I was born and raised in London. As I say, my parents are Nigerian. It presents for me a dilemma. What am I? Whose side am I on? I said to my dad, Dad, what am I? My dad sat me down and went, Stephen, never ever forget your roots. First and foremost, you are Nigerian, unless you're passing through immigration at any international airport. <laughs> then tell them what they want to hear. So I've got dual heritage. I was born in a hospital in South London called St. Stephen's Hospital. So you can just imagine how much my parents struggled to come up with my name. We have had the baby. What should we call him? I don't know. Look around you. Uh, Steven. <laughs> I mean, it was all right for me, but I was born a twin, and last year she had to change her name from hospital. <laughs> That's right, folks. I was born a twin. I didn't even have the luxury of being born alone. A twin. I said to my mum last year, tell me honestly, mum, what was it like having twins? My mum sat me down. She went, oh, Stephen, it was like all oh, the joy and beauty of having one child, but totally ruined. <laughs> Thanks, mum. And apparently back in the day, my mum didn't even know she was expecting twins, right? Because technology was quite bad, apparently. Right, she's in the hospital, gave birth to my sister, was getting dressed, about to leave. <laughs> Yeah, the nurse was like, Mrs. Amos, where are you going? There's another child. Apparently, Mum turns to Dad and goes, Ah, bastard! <laughs> You're always creating more work for me. First the dishes and now this. But I think, when I think about the job I do, right, we all have an agenda, right? But my agenda is to hopefully make you laugh. And a politician, right, also has an agenda. And a politician and a comedian, quite similar. Because you both stand up in front of a room full of strangers telling lies, right? <laughs> but my lies are designed to make you laugh, right? And it got me thinking about how people see me, right? I get the most strangest things. I went on holiday recently, well, recently, over Christmas. I went to Thailand because <clears throat> I got money. <laughs> so I don't need to be here. And I stayed in this all-inclusive resort. Now, when you hear the words all-inclusive, you go crazy, right? Well, everything, including the alcohol, boom! Ah! And by the way, this is me miming drinking a lot of alcohol, not a giant cock. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to the resort at five o'clock in the afternoon, and I was British, drinking, drinking, drinking. By seven o'clock, I was pissed in bed. The next morning at breakfast, the Thai waitress comes to my table and she says this. Now, forgive me, I can't really do a Thai accent, so I'll do a sort of generic sort of Asian accent for you. She said, uh, oh, good morning, how are you today? What's wrong with that? Have I turned the room? Anyone here think that was quite racist? Thank you, madam. I didn't use any gross stereotype, did I? I didn't say sucky sucky five dollar, I didn't say that. But I could have done. I said to her, I'm fine. Then she said, oh, the whole hotel, they talk about you. I said, oh my God, what did I do yesterday in my drunken haze, right? I said, what are they saying? And she said this, she went, oh, they all say Samuel L. Jackson, he get fucked last night. <laughs> I know, a bit of me was quite proud, you know, Uncle Samuel, yeah. Then I remembered, he's 65. <laughs> what is she trying to say about me? And do you think Samuel L. Jackson is walking along Hollywood Boulevard, right? Some British tourist sees him and goes, Oi, Stephen K. Amos, tell us a joke, wanker! <laughs> Doesn't matter where I go, people seem to think they can say what they like. I did a radio show in a place in Australia called Adelaide. Have you heard of Adelaide? Yeah, yeah now I've got no idea what year it is in Adelaide, for the mullet is alive and well. <laughs> And it was 6.30 in the morning, the interviewer, I'm not joking, he said this to me, he said, Oh, Steve, you come to Australia quite a bit. You must get recognised a lot. Tell me, what about at night? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, to my face. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't know we were going down racist road. Because I don't know about you guys here, right? But at night time, this has never, ever, ever happened to me. Bum, 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 bang. What on earth was that? Oh, another black person. I mean, does that happen here? And, uh, and presumably, by his own logic, a lot of white people must have many accidents in daylight. You've been a great audience, ladies and gentlemen, and I think you... I, I, I have it. Oh, hold, hold on. And I, I hope you've had a good night. Particularly, I'm, I'm drawn to you, the young lad. How old are you, son? 19. Oh, I could be your dad. <laughs> o obviously not. But I hope that you remember this show more than anybody else, right? You're near the front, you're young, you're 19. You're at that age where you still touch yourself. <laughs> Stop it! In that special way. And the next time you do, you're gonna see my face. <laughs> Good night, thank you very much. <laughs>